another episode of Groovy Tuesday. My name is Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. How's everybody doing today? Hope everybody had a, a nice bank holiday weekend. Hopefully I'm broadcasting. Um, just wait for a few people to, to join the party. And um, as soon as I, I bet, I wonder whether Mo is going to be the first one um, to pop up on the chat this morning, like she normally is. Um, I can see we've got people viewing. As soon as I hear or hear, as soon as I see some chat, then I know we're all good to go. Um, and yeah, I haven't seen anything yet, so hopefully it's working. Stuart should be in the room with you today. There we go. Karin's first in the room this morning. Uh, then Linda, good morning, everybody. There you go. You beat Mo to it today. Um, I was starting to get worried then, thinking nothing was happening. Everybody's still on bank holiday. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Jane. There we go. Ken. Jean. There we go. Everyone's coming in now. How's everyone doing? I hope everybody had a, a lovely bank holiday weekend. Um, weather was very nice. A um, bit overcast yesterday, but blustery. And it's very blustery here down in Kent today. What's the weather like with everybody? Um, should we have our usual Groovy Tuesday weather reports? Um, I've seen one there from, it's cold in Melbourne from Jenny. Um, sunny day in Shoreham, sunny from Flintshire. Um, partially sunny in Milton Keynes. Dull and overcast in Crawley. There's a lovely Glynis. Good morning, everybody. So, yeah, they were saying today, I heard on the radio, that they reckon today was meant to be the hottest day of the year so far, but they didn't say where. <laughs> so we'll just have to, to wait and see whether that materialises. Um, Jane's got lovely weather for a change. Well done, Jane. Um, normally not very nice with you, is it? So I think that's my text from Stuart. The sound is good. Thank you, Stuart. Stuart's in the room with you today, so if you have any questions. Um, I see we have um, some of the lovely design team in the room as well, so they're always there to help. I've seen um, Carol, Jane, Glynis. Um, anybody else from the design team in the room? I should just waffle for a little bit. I know we're just sort of dead on sort of 10 o'clock, um, so it just takes a while for people to find us. Um, Overcast in Nottingham. Um, <laughs> so Deborah is back in the office today and she is secretly listening while looking like I'm working. So right, we won't tell anyone, Deborah. <laughs> Let's hope nobody else in your office is tuning in at the same time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? 10 o'clock on a Tuesday already. Where is the time going? And we're up to episode 98 of Groovy Tuesday. So next week will be 99. And I reckon we'll finish this project next week. And then we'll have to think of something special for episode 100, which is the, um, the week after. Um, but I've got plenty of time to, to worry about that and come up with a plan, as they say. So... So yeah, the final bank holiday of May, done and dusted. Three this month. Cake, I just saw Ken say cake. Why is Ken saying cake? Who knows? But I'll go along with that. <laughs> um, oh, you're going to make me a cake, Ken, for the 100th um, episode of Groovy Tuesday? That's very generous of you. Um, so... Here we go, everyone's sort of coming in now, pulling up a chair, recovering from the, the bank holiday weekend. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're viewing from. Um, we have a lovely viewer from Melbourne as well, so I'm guessing it's night time over there. Um, rubbish with time differences and, and everything else. Um, it is June in a couple of days and already halfway through the year. I know, time sure does fly when you're having fun, doesn't it? 
and um, it's not far off now from our um, open days, um, which is a week on Friday um, at Ditton. Um, so we've still got tickets available if anybody's interested in coming along. I'm sure Stuart could pop a link up for us. Um, two fun field days um, full of fun, laughter. Um, they really are, and they sort of, it's sad because they come, they take a while to sort of come round, and then all of a sudden you blink and they're done and dusted. Um, but it's lovely because we have make and takes from um, Hazel. She's doing a groovy make and take. We have Sonia and Tina. See, I remember today um, doing a stampy make and take. We've got Glynis in the Snip Clinic. Then um, on Groovy, we've got the lovely Tina Cox and Jane Telford and myself. We'll also have Sam Crow in the building. Um, she'll be getting all inky and splodgy and messy. Um, we also have Leonie from TV and Dawn Wheeler from TV. And we also have Eileen Godwin as well. Um, and obviously Barbara will be there as well. And um, so that we're all there to sort of keep you occupied and um, entertain you. Then we'll have refreshments. There's free parking. Hopefully the weather will be nice and you can go and sit outside. Um, yeah, and then there's the hourly raffle on the hour every hour. It, um, the, the time just flies by, it really does. It's just like doing an hour on Groovy Tuesday or in the shack. And before you know, it's, it's all done for, for another year. Um, but it really is, it's sort of like a, um, a real sort of family gathering um, and we've got new family members coming and we've got old family members coming so go on then hands up in the room who's coming to the open days um, on the Friday or the Saturday maybe you're coming for both so it'd be interesting to see um, who's coming along so I know we've got many of our lovely friends coming so um so whilst you're sort of responding to that, um, let's have a look at what we've been working on the last um, few weeks. Um, yeah, there we go. Everyone's coming. Everyone from Groovy Tuesday's coming, or most of you are coming. Um, good morning, JC. Um, oh, the lovely Pat Hoskins, I'm sure. Um, yeah. So it's lovely to see all the lovely names popping up um oh jenny that's a shame isn't it too far to travel from australia oh never mind maybe we can plan it for next year maybe just pop over for the weekend <laughs> um so these are the designs we've been looking at um during the current episodes of groovy tuesday and this is our lovely a5 plate this is um james rose and lattice and we've also got the A5 square, which is a lovely lattice design. So you can see it's exactly the same design, but it has no design taken out from the middle. Okay. And if you're looking for a plate just to fill in borders, frames, backgrounds, um, then um, this is a great one. Um, to go for and it's quite generic um, if you wanted to do pico cutting in between all of it like this lovely sample from uh, where's that gone from carol baker carol baker has actually done all the hold up she's perforated and pico cut in between the lattice if you wanted to um so yes it, there's many different options available to you with that design um, and what we've been doing we've been looking at a, an interpretation of a piece that was done in the craft along back in september 2021 with linda and barbara and um, still available via our youtube page and um, just for this is using our rainbow parchment as well so if i take 
the paper away from underneath. Can you see how you've got this lovely sort of soft blend of colour? But what we've been doing, or what I've been doing, is working on clear parchment. Okay, but then when you take the um, paper that complements it and goes underneath, it then intensifies the colour of the rainbow parchment. So it's all about having different choices and different options. And I know many of us tune, uh, tuning in only joined us recently on Groovy Tuesday. So it's all about sort of breaking it down and coming up with different options. So what we've been, we looked at last week and the week before, this was the piece that I've been creating. And we've just taken the design exactly how it comes. So we've got that lovely lattice frame, we've got the rose, we had a look at some white work, um, and then we've started now to introduce the colour because we now have our fantastic blending pens back in stock. Okay. And they have been absolutely flying out the door. Um, I must admit that the initial run that we did um, is depleting very, very fast. So we will have some stock at the open days if you're coming along, if you haven't managed to purchase yours yet. But also, dun, 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 I'm pleased to announce we also now have the One Needle Fine backing stock. Um, Dave went and picked up um, another limited run on Friday from the new manufacturer. So I'm sure Stuart could pop the link up on the website to that. So that is available now. Um, again, a limited run on those. And just to give you the heads up, Tina will be showcasing the One Needle Fine tool on TV next Thursday. Thank you, Stuart. Um, so, um, so if you want to get the heads up on that, and you haven't got the one needle fine, then um, it's a perfect opportunity to pop it in your basket ahead of that TV show. Tina will also be using it at the open days as well. So um, if you're coming along, you can watch her work her magic. Okay, so that's the, the latest release. We're gradually getting the tools back into stock one by one and Dave's got some new tools in the pipeline as well. So watch this space. Maybe um, you may want to sort of sign up to our newsletters or our emails that we send out. I'm sure Stuart could pop a link up um, if you haven't already signed up to those um, because they keep you up to date on everything, all things clarity from our TV shows, from our designs of the week, um, our events, our open days. Um, they really are informative and Stuart sort of sends them out on a regular basis um, just to keep you all updated. So there we go, there's a link there that Stuart's popped in um, that you can click there, put your details in and then you're good to go and then you'll get the first email that's coming out later today. Okay, so we've been colouring in on the back and I've been using our Pergolina pencils, uh, B pencils, so I've been using, from Jane's advice, um, the B14 and the B1 to colour the rose in. And then I've used two different greens. I've taken the B7 and the B15. Okay, we've got our blending pen. We have our spot on sponge. And then we have our dorsal oil. And another I'm sure many, <laughs> from the number of, that we've sold in the past, I'm sure many of you already have it, but it's definitely a good thing to, to add to your basket, is the double-ended eraser pencil. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to carry on um, with the colouring in. And then we can decide what sentiment we're going to pop in there. Um, and then next week, I reckon we'll finish it all off um, 
put it onto a card and then I'll make a plan between now and next week on what we're going to have a look at for our 100th episode. So just a reminder, the blending pen is now back in stock, going fast, and the one needle fine is back in stock as well. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready? Chill out for a nice hour or 45 minutes um, and we can do some colouring and just build up the layers of our design. Are you good for that? I'm sure you are. So, do we have um, any newbies in the room today? Anybody tuning in for the first time? Found us by chance or mistake or maybe you've been watching Crate and Craft and you've heard us talking about The Shack, which is on a Monday at 10 o'clock, um, Groovy Tuesday, um, being stay 10 o'clock every week. And then I've got some exciting news about the return of a moment of clarity, which we'll talk about during the course of this hour. So yeah, something else to, to keep you entertained and um, look forward to, hopefully. Okay, so let's have a look here. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more now. Okay, I've got all my pencils that I need. So let's zoom in, let's have a look at this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so which way am I going? I'm gonna zoom in nice and slowly. There we go. So we can really sort of um, look at the coloring on the back. Okay. So if you're new to coloring in on parchment, then for me, the pencils are a really sort of a more safer way to go. Now, if I pop a piece of white card underneath, you can see the intensity of the color, okay? If I turn it over and we look at the front, we can see the color as we've started to build this up, but you lose the white outline. So this is where whether you use a rainbow paper or whether you use one of our companion paper, it then allows the line art to shine through, okay? So let's have a look at our design and we can start to, to finish off. So we have this little rosebud here and we've got another one here, which is all foliage. So I'm gonna take my light green, which is the B7, and I'm just gonna gently just scribble on very lightly with that light green first on where all the um, I'm sure there's a word for the bit that goes around the outside of a rose. I can't think what it is, but it will come to me, hopefully. Then on the rose itself, I'm going to put a base of white down. And then I'm going to take my spot on sponge. I'm going to add some Dorso oil. And then I'm going to take a white nib. I should follow. There we go. So I'm going to take a tiny little bit of oil. And what I want to do first is just blend the white in first. Okay. Now a little bit too much oil on there and it's sort of taken off. So we'll let that go. And I'm going to pop that one to one side. And then let's go with a another new nib and I'm going to start to blend in the green now okay has anyone finished their their piece of artwork yet I'm sure you have Stephen has got these fantastic tips that you can go right up and pick up the the detail into those smaller areas so we're just building up and we're just breaking down the fibers, not the fibers, the um, pigment of the pencil. And last week during the, the shack and also on the TV shows, um, Barbara was showing how you could use the Dorso oil on card. Um, and it worked fantastically. It really did. I've got some green 
and my stems there. Can't remember whether I put the dorso oil. So if you want to see how to use the dorso oil and the blending pens on cardstock, then you can go back and watch last week's episode of The Shack with Barb. All of our previous episodes are available on our YouTube page. Okay, so we've got that, we've got that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take that darker olive green. I'm gonna to start to introduce a little bit of darkness. I wonder if I pop a white piece of card underneath, whether you can see that. Yeah, look, so you can see. See, it's quite difficult for me to, to see it here on the, the black, but let me just, let's just keep that in place for a moment. Okay. And then if I go over the line, it doesn't matter, does it? Because I can take my eraser pencil and um, rub it out. So what we're doing now is we're just introducing the darker green so that we can then start to, to blend that color out. Okay. And we're just gonna build this up in layers as we would with white work. Okay. Now it's got a little bit too much oil on there because all it's doing it's just, it's not lifting it off, but it's just, it, it is working. It is working. What are you talking about, Paul? Everyone's gone quiet in the chat. You've either all fallen asleep or you've all disappeared. <laughs> so I'm going to go back in. I'm going to put a little bit more of that dark, sort of olivey green on the petals that we worked on last week. Just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more depth. Just like so. And I'm going to just slowly build up. Can we see that okay? Yeah. So, we just, it's all about, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Just building up. There's no, I mean, I don't know, I suppose, it's all time dependent, isn't it? And I really enjoy our sessions where we can spend um, the time just sort of breaking down the design um, and just slowly building it up. What else am I going a little bit up here? So I haven't put any more oil on the nib. And we're just slowly building up the depth. There we go. Just like so. And for me, I mean, I'm not the world's best colorist color arena, whatever you want to call it, sort of thing. But I'm happy with the result that I get. And especially with the, the pencils, and now that we've got the blending pen back in stock, it makes it so much more easy. Okay, so when we have a look there, we can start to see how that depth of color is sort of building up. And if I pop a piece of colored paper underneath, it really does make a difference, doesn't it? Okay. So let's go back to the rosebud. And we're going to add some of the 
B14, the purple into there. I'm just going to move the card. Okay. And then we're just going to put some color in there. Now what I want to do is just add a little bit more depth to the, the petals here. And because we've allowed it to, to settle for a week, we should get a little bit more intensity of color. Okay. So slowly. And I'm doing it as if I was doing sort of like the white work. It's that flicking action. Um, just starting at the bottom and then just flicking upwards. And if I find that I've gone on too heavy, then I could use the pink side of the eraser to remove a layer of the color. Well, not a layer, but you sort of, um, I'm sure there's a term for it, like knocking it back, so to speak. Okay. So let's put a little bit more depth just on this one, see if we can create the effect of that depth just there. And then when we'll turn it over, the colour's starting to come together. And then it definitely makes a difference, doesn't it, with a piece of paper behind it. Um, I totally agree, Nahid, um, regarding using the um, B14 for a shade of this lovely pink. Because I said in the past, for me, pink, I would just do the obvious and take um, the red and the white. Um, but this purple is a beautiful shade of pink. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our, there we go, I've got a purple nib that I've used before. And let's see what happens if I just try to, to soft blend. There we go. So I haven't put any oil on. Um, this is the nib that I used last week, and it definitely would be dry from the oil by this week because it's just been sitting on the table. So now we're dry blending. It sounds as if it's sort of like scratching, doesn't it? But it's not. I suppose I'm putting um, a little bit more pressure on. Um, but, oh, that looks lovely. I'm, yeah, I like that. So maybe that's another idea, is that you could do um, your blending um, with your oil. And then I, you wouldn't need to leave it a week. You'd probably just need to leave it a couple of hours just for the um, oils to completely evaporate and for the layer to dry. And then the dry blending, yeah, definitely makes a difference. And again, don't worry if you go over the edges because we can rub it out. We do. There we go. I think I need a little bit more on the tip of, of that petal. So let's turn it round. I don't want to go, I'm just sort of putting a line on there. So yes, yeah, so it's all go at Clarity Towers this week. Um, who tuned in to watch Barb on uh, Thursday and Friday last week? Um, some great shows. They, they shack framer stamps and the groovy. Really, really useful. Um, so that was on Thursday, just gone. At 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock. All available on the Create and Craft website if you miss the shows. Um, and then on Friday during the nine o'clock and the one o'clock. What was it on Friday? Oh, yes. 
it was the lovely henna um stamps from tina cox wasn't it It was the kiss henna stamps um they were magical because sometimes do you find it so sometimes you can look at a, a set of stamps of it oh where do i start how do i get going um and barb did some fantastic um she really put them through her paces on um friday at nine and one and then there was also a cheeky little um blog at the weekends as well um with cherry greens butterflies also i think when we we look at stamps um i know for myself from experience we automatically want to pick up um a black ink pad um, to stamp out the designs um, and you you can obviously do that and then but so you want some sometimes you want something a little bit softer so just by changing the color of the ink pad can really make a big difference um, to the design if that sort of if you know what I mean um, if you go with sort of like a soft yellow or um, an orange or a teal color, um, it really does give a different look to the design. And um, there was a couple of demos that Barb did where just by changing the color of the ink for the background, and then just picking up a little bit of oil just to blend in this rose blood, blood rose bud um and then so what you do it creates they created lovely backgrounds and um and then taking another stamp from the same set or the same collection and then stamping in black over the top all of a sudden it put that lovely background into the background um so if you're a stamper and you've got some stamps that you're not sure about, then stamp it out in black and then stamp it out in a different color and put them side by side. Um, and sometimes you'll, you'll, look at, you'll look at a design because for me, I know I always go black and then you stamp it in a different color. Kind of Is it the same stamp? Well, it is, but it just gives a, a different look to it. It's really weird how it sort of how that works, or well, in my head anyway. Anybody else sort of think the same, or is it just me? Probably just me, but I'm sure it's not. So, so we're just slowly adding in. I just want to blend. That little bit down there. So let's turn it over now from the front. There we go. So if I take the paper out, you can see now um, how it's starting to build up. I love this petal here. And then you reintroduce color into the background. Okay. So let's now take um that green again and let's darken up some of these the greenery okay so i'm gonna put a little bit more along here just like so a little bit more on the rose buds and i'm not putting any pressure on when i'm introducing the color um it's just that gentle light flicking carefully so that um that just because i don't want it to be solid i just want just to enhance the design Okay, maybe a little bit under there. Just 
just like so. Okay. And then on this side, we're just going to add a little bit. Now, this is the first layer on this particular leaf. There's my green nib. Let's swap out into my green nib. And just blend that out. Very, very soft. Okay. Easy does it. Don't forget, if you don't like um, the um, the colour of your flower, whether it be the rose or whether it be the leaves, then you can just rub it all out again. Okay. So let's put a little bit of darkness just over on this side. Not forgetting that we've also put some white work down as well. So this will just shine through, not behind the white work, but you can see it's just darkened up that area just like so. And if I go on this one, so I need to just flick out a little bit further on that one. Okay. Make sure I've still got my green nib in play. Okay. So you could spend a whole hour just coloring um, a rose or um, a leaf. It's what you get out of it, isn't it? Um, yeah. That's a good tip from Jane as well. If you want to color a stamped image, um, stamp it in a pale grey and then the lines can also almost disappear. I suppose it goes back to that technique also on parchment that Frances does when she's giving that porcelain painted look um, which was covered in one of the Clarity Matters blog a couple of weeks ago. Um, fantastic step by step. I mean the design team all do a fantastic um, step-by-step -step project every single week over on the Clarity Matters blog um, that you can sort of go back and read again and again and again. But when it, so when it comes to stamping, as Jane said, stamp out in, I think, is it shadow grey and archival shadow grey? That's a really nice soft grey. Or there's um, Pebble, Pebble Beach, I think it is, um, to give you that softer line art but then when it comes to parchment, you can either trace out with the number two or three or follow the techniques that um, Francis has done. Okay, so let's have a look now as we start to, yeah, really happy with that. Okay, should we get, oh, I forgot the ribbon. What colour should we do the ribbon? Mmm, decisions, decisions. Oh, I don't know. Any suggestions on the colour of the ribbon? I want to start singing that song, tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to stick with a blue ribbon from Josie. Okay, let's, let's see what other suggestions we have. I was just about to jump straight in there with my answer. So we've got blue from Josie, purple from Carol, blue from Patricia, blue from Bernie, uh, pink, dark pink, no yellow, <laughs> purple, purple, pink, pink to match the rose, blue, blue is nice. I'm going to sneak the pencil in what colour I thought I was going to go with. I was going to go with, hang on, here it comes. 
I was going to go for the purple. Um, oh, sweet Ken. He was going to go yellow <laughs> as well. I mean, Ken's just being nice. I mean, Ken is nice. He's not just being nice. Ken is very nice. <laughs> okay, let's go with blue. Should we go with blue? Okay, let's have a look then. So we've got a lovely, we've got two different shades of blue in the B pencils. Uh, Pat's saying we could emboss it. We could do, yeah. A lovely deep red from Alison. Oh. Okay, let's try these two blues. Two blues or not two blues? That is the question. So what I'm going to do before I go in to my piece of um, artwork, I'm going to test first. Okay, so I'm going to take my groovy plate and I'm going to take remember my practice piece. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trace out part of the ribbon. Okay, for that I need my groovy tools. So I'm going to go with the um, the number one. Okay, so give it a little wipe with the tumble dry sheet, and just trace out the ribbon, just this part here. Okay. Right, so let's have a look. So if I do my same principle as before, um, so I'm going to go on with the, the light blue first to pop an undercoat down. Then I'm going to take a nib and my blending pen, a little bit of Dorso oil, just to break the pigment down. Okay, so that's, I know what I'm going to do. Hang about, hang about. Let's do a couple of different things. So let's do another one underneath. I'm going to try a few things. Okay. Right, so that's the, the light blue. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my white pencil. Who's borrowed my white pencil? Where's that gone? Okay, whilst I, <laughs> that's weird. That is so weird. Oh, there it is, it's hiding. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a layer of white down. Like so. Then I need my white nib, which I've used not for white, but for a different color. Um, pop up there, a little bit of oil, break the white down. So now I'm going to go for the, the darker blue. So if I put some darker blue on the tips there, and just like on that one. And then on this one, I'm gonna put the darker blue just there, in the same places. Okay, then I'm gonna go another nib. So what I'm gonna do for that, I'm gonna try soft blending, dry blending, that blue out first to bring that in and then let's do the same on this one so there's no oil 
been added to the nib for the darker blue. So let's have a look. If I turn that over. So the bottom one has got white with the darker blue. And then the top one has got the lighter blue with the darker blue on top. I think I prefer the bottom one. Okay. So the bottom one was the white on first. So let's pop a light layer of white onto our ribbon. Just like so. There we go. Nice and lightly to build it up. Now I'm going to take my white nib with a little bit of, I think there's probably still some enough oil on there. Yeah, there we go. Just to soften. pigment. There we go. So yeah, so what else are I going to tell you while we're just doing this? Um, so we've spoken about um, the open day tickets. We've said that the uh, blending pen's back in stock and the one needle fine. Um, and Tina will be showcasing those on TV next week with a set of brand new designs. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, but before that, we have, um, so on Sunday, it's the first Sunday of the month. Um, so Barb's on TV from three till five um, with some new stamps that you designed, say, yeah, that you created in the shack. Um, so... Um, that's on Sunday, three till five. But before then, um, Barb's um, kickstarting the um, Moments of Clarity back into play. So on Friday at 7 p.m., live on our Facebook and YouTube page, um, there'll be a Moment of Clarity with Barbara. And... Um, all the information will be going out in a, an e-shop later today. And it's also going to tie in with the design of the week that will launch later today as well. So if you haven't signed up to our newsletters, our emails, then make sure you do. Or check out the website later today um, where it'll be information will be available. Um, after this morning's Groovy Tuesday, we're, uh, we're going to have a, a planning meeting on what's coming up um, with the moments of clarity, the designs of the week, um, upcoming TV shows. Um, yeah, lots and lots of planning going on at the moment. Um, lots of exciting new designs in play. Um, TV shows, so, but the best way to find out about it is definitely signing up to our emails. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the, um, the moment of clarity on Friday. So... It's at seven o'clock, but if you can't join us live at, at seven o'clock, um, don't worry, um, because as you know, it they're always available on our YouTube page afterwards. Um, and you can watch it at your own convenience. There'll be lots of hints, tips, um. Yeah. There we go. Let's 
start to just bring that into play. So that's something else to look forward to. The day, hopefully by um, um, what am I thinking? What am I saying? If the weather that they're forecast this week that it's meant to be really warm, then come seven o'clock on a Friday evening, hopefully you'll all be in from the garden. Or maybe if you've got a, a tablet, you can watch outside in the garden. Um, and just enjoy what Barbara's got to show. I'll be in the room, the virtual room, answering any questions, popping up any links. Um, so yes, yeah, so it should be a good, good time on Friday. Uh, I say more information to follow shortly. There we go. So if I turn that over, there we go. It's starting to, to take shape now, isn't it? And we can really sort of see, I think, yeah, I think blue was a nice option to go with. Um, So, and then we can just build that up with, so if you want that blue to be a little bit darker, um, then what you can do, you need to be very careful with it because it doesn't require much. Um, you could take the black and the black will darken up the blue. Um, so where is my scrap piece? If I take the black, uh, a very, very tiny, tiny amount, if I take the blue, it needs a little bit of movement with the oil. But too much, I think. Too much oil. Let's put the card in underneath. But you can see it's now, it has gone to a darker blue, but it's gone more of a, a petrol blue. Um, but don't forget, I take the pink razor very, very lightly. I can just take it back. I can go. Back on with the, the darker blue. And then uh, let's go back to my blue nib. Okay. So don't panic if you, you do something you think, oh no, um, I've ruined it. Just take an eraser pencil, rub it out, start again. So I reckon that would definitely, yeah, that's definitely a, a darker blue to the blue down there. Let me bring that up so you can sort of see a little bit more close. I think it'd be easy if I lift it. Where am I going? Hang on, that way. So this one here is where I introduced a little bit of black um, to that. Okay. So you can, if you want to, I mean, you could mix on the mix mats and create the color first before going in, or you can go direct to the parchment. But it's definitely a good idea just to practice like I've done. I mean, you don't have to, but it's, it's just a suggestion. I would feel more confident practicing first before going into my piece of artwork. So now if I go to my piece of artwork and I know it's just a tiny little bit of the black pencil. And I mean, an absolute tiny little amount. As if it's barely touching. And I'll go back to that other nib. Whee! Uh, 
and then just blend it in like so. There we go. So what else have I got to tell you? I think that's everything on my list. Obviously, you've got, you've got the, the Clarity Matters blog. You've got Barb's blog. Um, so all the information about the Clarity, um, the Moments of Clarity will be posted on Barb's blog um, during the course of the week. Um, but I said there's lots and lots of exciting stuff coming up over the next few months. And I've gone over the edge slightly, so I'm going to take my eraser just to tidy it up. I mean, I can see it because I'm in really, really close. Um, but in the scheme of things, It's only because I can see it. I know it's there. And use a, a stencil brush to get rid of your eraser rubbings. Don't try and blow on it. Because if you're like me, you're likely to get it wet. <laughs> okay. Nice. Really starting to come together now. Blue was definitely the right choice on that. So thank you everybody for those suggestions. On what I'm gonna do, yeah, we've got time. I'm gonna introduce some blue to the circle around there sort of to bring it in. Okay, so to do that, it's the same principle. We're just gonna pop some white in first. Okay, so let's go all the way around with our white. Let's put our base down. So that we've got the same sort of color palette. And you'll notice that I'm turning my work as I go. So my hand, similar to when I'm pico cutting, my hand is staying in the same place whilst I put the white down. And it's still that same light pressure going on very, very lightly with the white. And I shall go back to my white nib. See, this is where you could do with a couple of blending pens. You haven't got, keep one just for your, for your white. Um, and then I'm just going to follow that round. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little groovy tab in the corner so I know where I've started. So we're just going to smooth out the white now, just like so. Maybe a tiny little bit more oil. I can feel it just not wanting to move. And this is very subtle, really does. I mean, if you want to, oh, groovy tabs come off. Let's just pop that there. Oh, you know what? I know where it is. It's going to slowly just build it up. Now we're going to take that blue and then all I'm going to do, I'm just going to very gently run that blue in between the two white emboss lines. I say if you wanted to, you could emboss these if you wanted to. It's again, it's about having choices. Now, normally I would think, oh, there's no way I'm going to um, colour in a circle because I'm going to go over the edges. And But I'm not worried because I can take my eraser and if I do go over the line, but the nibs are so fine... that they stay, we've got sort of like a steady hand, they stay within the confines of those two embossed lines. 
So you just tiny little bit of oil. Like so. And I reckon next week what I'm going to do, I'm going to put another layer of blue on top just to darken it up a little bit. And there's plenty of time then for that oil to have dried. So there we go. So we've got, so if I take the color away, so you can see I've got the blue, very soft and subtle. And I just want to intensify it slightly. So next week, I'm going to darken up that blue with another layer of that dark blue. Okay. Because believe it or not, time has flown by again. Goodness me. <laughs> Where does it go? See, it flies. It really, really does. Um, so thank you again for joining me this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, just a bit of a, a quick recap. Um, Friday, seven o'clock on Facebook and YouTube Live um, is a moment of clarity with Barb. Then on Sunday, three till five on Create and Craft. Then Barb will be back in the shack with you on Monday at 10 o'clock, usual time, usual place. Um, Facebook and YouTube Live. And I'll be back with you again next Tuesday for another episode of Groovy Tuesday. So thank you to Stuart for his help. I'm looking at my phone because that's where Stuart is. Stuart's in my phone. <laughs> um, and thank you to the lovely design team um, for their help during this hour as well, as always. Um, so don't forget to check everything out. And um, I will see you if you're going to join in on Friday, I'll be in the room with you on Friday. Otherwise, I will see you in the shack on Monday with Bob. Okay, enjoy the rest of your week and um, have fun. Take care now. Bye-bye.